Okay, so the goal of this video is to get you to understand fractions in about seven minutes. So let's see if we can do it. Um, really, uh, obviously, am I going to get you to completely master fractions in seven minutes? No, I'm expecting that you've um, studied fractions before. Uh, so this is going to be like just a quick review of, all the, of the basic uh, functions with dealing with fractions. But we are going to cover pretty much um, the, the whole scope of most common problems that you have when um, you're working with fractions. Okay, so I've got seven problems. Let's start with the first one. All right, so three and one half. This is called a mixed uh, fraction. Okay, so if you have a number and a little fraction next to it, that's called a mixed fraction. So we need to be able to write a mixed fraction as an improper fraction. That's a fraction like down here, like 10 over 3. So the way you do that is just you take this bottom number, 2, and you multiply it by 3, and then we're going to add the 1. So you probably remember how to do that. So that's going to be 2 times 3, that's 6, plus 1 is going to be 6 plus 1, that's 7 over 2. Okay, so we need to be able to take mixed number fractions and turn them into improper fractions. Now, we also need to, let's move on to our second problem, take improper fractions and write them as a mixed number. So that what we do there is we simply go ahead and just divide. So this is 10 divided by three. So we got three, or 10 divided by three, we can write it this way. So three goes into 10, three times, three times three is nine. We have one as a remainder, so we're gonna write with this remainder is one, one and then whatever number this is, is three, is we're going to write it just like this. So that's three and one third. So ten thirds, okay, is equal to three and one third. So just basic fraction terminology. This is an improper fraction because the numerator, matter of fact, I should just kind of break this up here, ten over three. When we're dealing with fractions, the top number is the numerator, the bottom number is the denominator. Okay, so anytime the numerator number is bigger than the denominator number, we call that an improper fraction. Now, I talked about mixed numbers, okay, so I can write this as three and one half. So this is a mixed number, this is an improper fraction, and a proper fraction is where the numerator is less than the denominator, so something like one half. Okay, so the denominator down here is bigger than the numerator. So this is a proper fraction, improper fraction, and mixed numbers. So you need to kind of be able to go back and forth between the two. Okay, so we're on to number three. And let's see here. So in this one, I wanted to talk about very quickly um, the idea of reducing or simplifying a fraction. So here I have 10 over 24. When you're dealing with fractions, you always want to reduce them or write them in their simplest form. So the idea here is to think of a number that goes into both 10 and 24. So you might have thought to yourself, well, it's 2, okay? And that's good. So 2 goes into 10 how many times? 5 times. And 2 goes into 24 uh, 12 times, okay? So this fraction, 10 24 is equivalent to the simpler fraction, 5 12 Now, another way you can think about reducing or simplifying fractions, let me go ahead and write this over here, 10 24 is to look at the factors of these numbers. In other words, 10 is the same thing as 2 times 5, and 24 is the same thing as 2 times 12. So anytime you have the, and these are called factors again, okay, now where the, uh, this 10 can be written as a product of these numbers, these are the factors of this number here. But anytime you have the same factor, in both the numerator and denominator, we could do something called cross-cancel. Essentially, we just get rid of them, and then whatever's left is um, the answer, okay? This more the simplified fraction. So 10 24 is equivalent to the fraction 5 twelfths. okay? So we talked about the basic part so far, fractions, numerator, denominator, proper fraction, improper fraction, mixed number, and now simplifying. So remember, when you're dealing with fractions, you always want to work with uh, fractions in their simplest forms or your final answer you want to reduce, okay? All right, let's move on to number four. Okay, so hopefully I can get this done in seven minutes. I may go over a little bit, but uh, just think you'll, you'll understand fractions here. Crash course. All right, so now we have uh, two fractions here. Doesn't make a difference if they're improper or proper, okay? 
Uh, but the idea is we want to multiply them. So I have one fraction and I want to multiply it by another fraction. This is very easy, okay? All you need to do is simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So two times three is six, five times four is 20, okay? And then here, this is a valid correct answer. However, you always want to simplify uh, your answers, reduce it. Okay, this was kind of brings us back to the previous problem. So you can think of six as what? Two times three, as I just wrote this. And 20, I can think of, well, I can think of it as five times four, but I can also think of it as two times 10. Okay, so I'm looking to create kind of common factors. So I can cross cancel and I'm left with the fraction three tenths. Okay, so three tenths is the simplified version of six twentieth. Mathematically, they're equivalent, okay? But you always want to leave your final answers uh, uh, fully reduced or simplified. Okay, so we got multiplication down. Let's talk about division. So division is actually quite easy as well. What we do with fractions is we don't actually divide fractions. We're going to turn this problem into a multiplication problem. And because the previous problem here, I showed you how to multiply, um, so we already know how to do that. I'm gonna show, we're going to turn this into a multiplication problem, and then we're going to do what we did in problem number four. So what we do there, it's very easy, is we're, we write the first fraction again. So that's three eighths. Now we're going to change the division sign here into multiplication. Now here's the deal. In order to change this from division to multiplication, you have to take this fraction to the right of the symbol, the division symbol, and flip it upside down. It's called the reciprocal or inverse. Just flip it upside down. So that's going to be 10 over 6. Okay. So now I have a multiplication problem. So I'm going to do what I did in problem 4. Okay. I'm simply going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 3 times 10 is 30. And six times eight, uh, eight times six, excuse me, is 48. And then I would go ahead and simplify, okay? I'm actually going to skip that right now because I want to try to see if I can finish this video up in a pretty timely manner. However, we would want to simplify as I showed you in problems uh, three and four, okay? But technically speaking, all right, this is a correct answer. Now, let's kind of stop and pause. If you think about the operations that we do with numbers, okay, and fractions are nothing more than numbers, we multiply, we divide, we add, and we subtract. So as I showed you with fractions, multiplication and division are effectively the same step. We have to take an extra step with the division, but we end up just multiplying. The same thing is gonna be true with addition and subtraction. Effectively, you're gonna do the same things. Now. For the purposes of this video, because I'm gonna, I'm, I'm directing this video towards somebody who's like maybe totally forgot fractions or really is struggling, but I'm gonna teach you a way to add and subtract fractions um, that we're gonna bypass what they kind of teach you in school as far as the lowest common denominator and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm gonna give you a shortcut method. The idea here is that I'm just giving you a procedure to use that you'll get these problems right every time, okay? So let's talk about addition and subtraction. Procedure is the same, okay, no matter what, uh, whether, whether you're dealing with adding or subtracting. So here it goes. It's called the bow tie method. So the way it works is this. You start with this number down here, okay? So it's the fraction to the right, okay? It actually doesn't have to be in this particular order, but this is the way I do it. I would suggest you just do it my way and just remember the this procedure. It's three steps and you'll be done. So it's going to be this number times this number. So let's go ahead and write that here. So five times two is what? Ten. We'll write that there. This is an addition problem, so I'm going to write a plus. Then you're going to take this number and we're going to multiply across this way, okay, in a diagonal fashion. So three times seven is 21. Okay, this is our numerator. So we're gonna draw a little fraction bar. Now to get to our denominator, we just simply multiply the bottom numbers. Okay, so three times five is 15. And we just simplify this, 10 times 21 is 31 over 15 and you're done. That is it. So 
this is a great method because when you're dealing with algebra, by the way, let me just say one other thing here. You would want to simplify this uh, answer. So if you got an answer, let's say 30 over 48 or something, you want to uh, simplify uh, the answer. The disadvantage for using this method for all problems is that sometimes you won't be, you'll, you'll, you'll get a fraction that doesn't have the lowest common denominator. So, um, so technically, you, you, you still need to understand that if you're in a algebra course or whatnot, but, but doing it, but adding fractions this way, you'll get them right every single time. And by the way, let's just take a look at a quick algebra problem. Let's say you have uh, something like this. Um, so you may not understand this completely, but if I wanted to add these fractions, I could go x times x. I'm following the same step. x times x happens to be x squared, okay? y times z, sorry, this is an addition problem, so it's going to be plus y times z is y z over y times x, and that's it. This is a great method. I refer to it as a bow tie method, so um, you definitely want to learn this or keep this in your kind of like back pocket, okay? So if you forget anything about fractions, you can always do this for addition and subtraction. Okay, let's do this last problem here. We're using the exact same method, starting with this bottom number. We're going to go this way. 8 times 3 is what? 24. Now, because this is a subtraction problem, we need, we need to use the subtraction operator. So that's going to be 4 times 1. We're doing the exact same steps as the previous problem, is uh, 4 over, that's our numerator, of 4 times 8, which is what? 32. So our answer is going to be 20 over 32. And of course, we can reduce this. Okay, 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5, and 32 is the same thing as 4 times 8. So I have these common factors, which I can cross cancel, and I'm left with my final answer. Whoops, I don't want that. I'm left with my final answer, 5 eighths. Okay, and that is it. Okay. So really, fractions, I'm not sure how long this video has gone, but you pretty much learned <laughs> a month's worth of fractions, crash course. Um, hopefully, I was, I'm was. i sure I'm over seven minutes, but who cares? The deal is that, you know what, you probably like um, remember all the stuff that you had to go through. Now, there is obviously a few other things that you need to know with fractions. Let me just make one other comment here. Let's suppose you had a problem like 3 and 1 half divided by 2 and 1 thirds, okay? So you're like, well, how do I deal with that? You know, I don't see how I, um, you know, whether this is adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. The deal is with these mixed numbers, just convert them into improper fractions. So 3 and 1 halves is the same thing as what? Uh, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1, 7 halves divided by... Um, uh, this is going to be 6 plus, oh, this is actually the same thing, right? So 6 plus 1 is 7 halves, okay? So you would just, this is a, this kind of worked that way. I just picked these random numbers, but you get the idea. This is the same thing as that. This is the same thing as that. And then you would do this problem using the steps I just showed you. Okay, so finish this video up. Uh, I'd hope that you find this video useful and you, you subscribe to my channel. I do a ton of uh, math science stuff, mostly kind of math. Uh, so my background is math, math teacher, but I'm trying to help out those of you who like are really struggling and you just need some kind of basic crash course just to do problems. And when, when it comes to fractions, this is certainly helpful. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know how it goes. Let me know if this is uh, actually helping you. So um, good, luck with you, good luck with your fractions and uh, hope to see you soon.